Yeah. Okay, we're recording. All right. I, I hope this is the second part of the um, video. Anyway, let me get, let me erase this. So this is our rule, and the mean value of action, time order product, five x five y is minus i to Feynman uh, propagator. And this is what we derived earlier in, in a path integral formulation. So we've um, sort of brought the two together. Now let me um, go back to what we were doing uh, with the electromagnetic field. Um, and we were talking about we were quantizing it in the Coulomb gauge. Any question, though, as I'm erasing this? structure is the same basically as for a scalar field. The difference is we have polarization vectors here, which make this a three-dimensional vector. Equivalent, you can think of this as a four vector with zero as the time component. And that's because in the Coulomb gauge, the time component of the electromagnetic field is not a quantum variable. Instead, it's a dependent variable that's given by uh, that famous uh, integral over the uh, charge density. All right, now, what I want to show you is uh, I want to do a polarization sum for you. These polarization sums are very important. And in particular, let me just call it Mik, Ij, of K is going to be the sum lambda equals plus or minus epsilon I lambda of K epsilon j star lambda of k. And what I want to do is I want to show that this is equal to delta ij minus ki kj over k vector squared. So that's a nice uh, 
formula. Now there are various ways of um yeah. Okay, is that a function of lambda or x or k? Whoops, sorry. Um, a only has, it has an index, this vector index, and then it has a space time variable. We're summing over lambda, so lambda is a dummy variable. All right, now, what do we say about M? Well, M is Hermitian as a matrix. It's three by three. It has trace two. And we can say that M on the vector K is zero, and K transpose on M is zero. I think these are sufficient to determine exactly what M is, but let me show you what M is more directly by using our formulas for epsilon. I think this is um, a good thing to do. notation now, epsilon lambda of k, epsilon lambda dagger is what I should have had in my notes. I had, can I use your pen a second? Thanks. <clears throat> epsilon dagger of k, and so this is one half sum on lambda r of k, one lambda i zero, one minus lambda i zero, r inverse of k. Let me remind you what r is. r is a three by three matrix that takes z hat into k. So r of k take z hat into actually k hat. And there are many rotations that do that. Obviously, you can have a prefactor. It's a rotation about the z-axis. And that doesn't change anything. You're going to have a postfactor, which is a rotation about the k hat axis. That doesn't change anything. So r is not defined uniquely. You just make some convention and you define what um, which of the many rotations we're talking about. But what it has to do is it takes z hat into k hat. And we will need to know which the choice is. OK, this is an outer product of vectors. And so this is actually a half sum on lambda r of k, 3 by 3 matrix. And this is a 3 by 3 matrix. And if you're rusty about outer products, here's how, this, how it works. You take this guy here and multiply it over there. So you get 1 minus lambda i 0. Then you take this one and multiply it across, and you get lambda i uh, lambda squared, which of course is 1, 0. And then this one just gives you 0, 0, 0. But now when we sum over lambda with plus or minus, this one goes to zero and that one goes to zero. So this is one half r of k, one, lambda squared is obviously one, zero, 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 zero. r 
inverse of k. Now r, of course, is 3 by 3. It's unitary. It's real. So it's orthogonal. The adjoint is the transpose is the inverse. So this r inverse can be thought of as r transpose or r adjoint or r inverse. Now what is this? Well, this is equal to 1 half r of k. Why is this still a one half? Why one? Why half? Why is this still a half? Still a half. Um, good point. I think you're absolutely right. Brilliant. It's because my arm was down. My left arm was down. Um, let me just check the notes. I think that the... Right, the... the there's no hat. <coughs> Okay, so what, what do we have then? What we have is a 3 by 3 identity matrix. And then minus this piece. But this piece is minus z hat, z hat transpose r, in fact, let me just call it r transpose just to make things symmetrical. Okay. Well, the first term is R1, R inverse, so that's just 1, this is the 3 by 3 identity matrix. R of K takes Z hat into K hat, so this is minus K hat, K hat transpose. Okay. And of course, what that means then is that Mij is equal to delta Ij minus k i k j over k vector squared. So that's what the polarization sum is. Now, the second homework problem that I added was to take this, re to take, to use this spin sum, which is to say that the sum of the polarization, the outer product of polarization vectors over lambda that sum is delta ij minus ki kj over k squared. Use that, and you don't need to use very much of it, to show that ai and aj at equal time commute, equal times commute, and that ai dot and aj dot at equal times commute. So that's what the third homework problem, second homework problem is. to do then is to show you that, um, show you what happens if we take AI with a J dot. And um, integral dq 
2k over the square root 2 pi cubed, 2k zero, and now um, epsilon i lambda of k, a of k, the i k x. Um, plus epsilon lambda star i of k, a dagger of k, either minus i k x. So it's all that commutated with sum on lambda prime integral, let us say, d q k prime, 2 pi cubed, 2 k prime 0, epsilon lambda prime j of k prime, but now there's a dot. There's also a minus sign in the metric. So let me write that as minus i k zero. That's what's pulled down by the time derivative. Epsilon lambda prime j with a prime here k prime, e to the i k prime y, um, plus i k zero prime, epsilon j star lambda prime of k prime, e to the minus i k prime y. Okay, and, all right, well, let me make this a, uh, curly bracket, another curly bracket there. Okay. Now, A commutes with, oh wait, where's the A? I left out an A. This is all important. A, lambda prime of A prime, and then in here, A dagger lambda prime of K prime. Okay, well, A of K commutes with this A of K, but not with this one. And so what we get as a commutator I don't know if I should write everything down. Let, maybe I should. Sum over lambda and lambda prime integral dqk dqk prime 2 pi cubed, 2 square root k0, k0 prime. So that's that. Then the rest of this is going to be epsilon i lambda of k, epsilon j star lambda prime of k prime. And now this commutator of a lambda k with a dagger lambda prime there is going to be delta lambda lambda prime delta cubed of k minus k prime. But there's an i k zero here prime. The next term is going to be a dagger with this a. And that's going to be plus epsilon star i lambda of k. And it's going to be minus i k zero prime. And then epsilon j lambda prime of k prime. And I left something out, an all important phase factor. This thing is e to the i k x minus i k prime y. And this is going to be e to the minus i k x plus i k prime y. And the commutator here is a dagger a. So that's delta lambda lambda prime delta cubed k minus k prime, but with a minus sign.
since my left hand is down, you need to be checking me, all right? I didn't have time to latex this. Um, all right. Now, as I said, when you, as you work through your study of quantum field theory, you're going to come to love Paul Dirac and his delta function because we've got a terrible six-dimensional integral. The delta function makes it a three-dimensional integral. Um, Sorry, I'm not sure if you said it. What about the like terms question? Where what? The like terms. What terms? The like terms. Like terms. Oh, well, that's because they would be the commutator of a lambda no. k with a lambda prime k prime. That's zero. Okay, so we have this delta, double delta. So we're left with sum over lambda integral d cubed k. 2 pi cubed, 2k0 because the three-dimensional delta function makes k0 prime equal to k0. We then have here e to the i k x minus y, and then we have epsilon i lambda of k epsilon star j lambda of k. Uh, but then we then have an i k zero, and these minus signs cancel, so we get i k zero epsilon star i lambda of k epsilon j lambda of k e to the minus i k x minus y. So this is what we have. Now we see that things are turning out very nicely. Because you see the k0 here cancels this k0 and moreover we've got epsilon star we've got a sum over lambda of this thing. Well the sum over lambda <coughs> We saw that the sum over lambda of these things is real. Since it's real, we can um, move the star over here and we combine the two. So all together what we've got is sum over lambda integral d cubed k 2 pi cubed e to the i k x minus y and i out in front the 2 and the k 0 have cancelled we have epsilon i lambda of k epsilon star j lambda of k and I'm getting this <coughs> I'm getting this hold on a second well maybe I should write it this way e to the i k x minus y plus e to the minus i k x minus y so it looks like this so you know, I think you're right. <coughs> Thank you. It's really worth two chocolates, but we've had so many I'm worried about <laughs> diabetes. Um, Sorry, what you by the way, there's a... All right, when I get to the end of this, I have... <coughs> I have we're going to change some good stories. All right. The next thing is then I. Now this sum over lambda is going to is quite nice. This is integral d cubed k over 2 pi cubed. 
um, one half e to the i k x minus y plus e to the minus i k x minus y. And then this thing is, I don't know if there's room to write it, but delta i j minus k i k j over k vector squared. In other words, it's this thing here written small over there. Now this is an even function of k vector. We're integrating over k vector. This is an even function of k. Here, we've got a k0, but k0 is an even function of k. And consequently, um, we can just flip k vector to minus k vector, and um, we just make this minus a plus. And so what we've got very close to the second homework problem. Right? Huh? No, I told you what it was. Oh, didn't I tell you what it was? The second homework problem is to show that AI commutes with AJ and that AI dot commutes with AJ dot. So now what do we have here? We've got an I integral dqk Two pi cube e to the i k x minus y delta i j minus k i k j over k vector squared. All right. So this is i delta i j delta q of x minus y. Oh, I sh what I forgot to say, I mean, I said it explicitly here, but you see, there's no, I was talking about a K0 term. There is no K0 term here, because um, the times are equal. And so over here, it was even easier to flip X minus Y to Y minus X is because there isn't any K0. I should have mentioned that. So, how does that mean that we can just combine these into a single exponential? I mean, how is it that I could combine this with this and cancel your factor two? Yeah, it's a little bit on the cosine of k. All right, all right, all right. Let me, let me. All right, we have an integral e cubed k e to the minus i, and it's just a k vector dot x minus y vector, okay? And then it's um, delta ij minus ki kj over k vector squared, okay? All right, now, what we're doing is we're, all right, let, 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 let us just replace minus k, let us set minus k equal to p. And this is just a positive measure. So this is, goes into dq p. Then we get e to the i p x minus y, and now delta i j minus minus p i minus p j over p squared, or minus p squared. But these minus signs cancel. So, because this thing is even. 
So I understand that they fit. The so it's pi pj over p squared. So you can combine, so this thing is the same as integral p to the i k x minus y uh, delta i j minus k i k j over k squared p q k. So these are the same. So I was able to set this equal to that and cancel the two. Okay, and I understand the list there, but I don't understand how you're translating d3k into a denominator d3k. You said something about the positivity? I didn't... Yeah. Frankly, I'm very sympathetic to your question because it puzzles me every time. Um, it, it, it was... All right. What is this integral? This is a sum of this thing over all points in k-space. Okay. So in other words, we're summing it over k this way, k that way, k that way, k this way. Okay. So this thing is, a, is a, an intrinsically positive measure. It's just the size of each cube in k-space. So, so they can't have negative huh? volume. Huh? Can't have negative volume. Yeah. It's a little I mean, they're... There are slicker ways of saying it, but... Okay, so we've got the first term. The next term, though, is a derivative. What derivative is it? Well, it's plus i, and it's two derivatives. It's di, or let, us, let me write this more. Exactly. D2 partial xi partial xj of the integral dq k e to the i k dot x minus y over k vector squared 2 pi q. Okay? And this is our famous. I delta I j delta q x minus y plus I partial to partial x i partial x j of 1 over 4 pi x minus y. This is the Green's function for uh, what? Laplace's equation or Poisson's equation? One of the two. The French equation. And this is also called the transverse delta function. Transverse because apart from the ordinary delta function, we've got this screwy term involving the uh, the uh, <coughs> all those um, involving those partial derivatives. All right, any questions? All right, once again, it's story time. And I've got several stories. But I might have told you one or two of them. Let me, the first one is, is um, a joke that went around the Soviet Union when the Soviet Union, before the breakup of the Soviet Union. And it was, um, about the difference between capitalism and communism. In capitalism, man explo exploits man. In communism, it's the other way around. <laughs> okay, that was the first story. Um, there are two other stories. I remember one clearly, I, and the other one has slipped my mind. The, this other story is a longer story, and it's... Um, a true story uh, of something that happened just over 50 years ago. And just over 50 years ago was the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. I was in college at the Midwest, and I wasn't watching television, and I was blissfully 
ignorant of the whole damn thing. Um, this was before the internet, you know, so all I had in my room was physics books in the bed. And um, uh, so I, I wasn't really aware of it. On the other hand, um, later when I got to graduate school um, in uh, the Boston area, uh, there was this one graduate student who told me that he was so frightened that he got together and went camping in the mountains in case there was nuclear war because he thought Boston would be wiped out. Anyway, um, the story is that um, six months or so apart, that the CIA, before the Cuban Missile Crisis, had been trying to kill Castro, Fidel Castro. And um, one of the people they hired was a hero in the, a guerrilla hero in uh, Cuba, who happened to have a beach house right next to Castro's. And this guy was being briefed about, I guess, let us say, six months before the Cuban Missile Crisis by somebody who said that he was Robert Kennedy's personal representative. And the mission was to kill Castro, and he'd get the means to do it in six months. Well, six months went by, it was in the middle of the Cuban Missile, it, no, I'm sorry, it was after the Cuban Missile Crisis. It was, in fact, November, uh, two years later, or a year later, I don't know. I lost track of it. Two year, one year later, November, a little more than a year later. And um, this other person from the CIA, they were meeting both times in a safe house in Paris. And the CIA guy was giving the man a paper made pen and a syringe and a um, uh, bottle of poison. And the deal was, you, you, what he had to do was use the syringe, take the poison out, load it into the paper made pen, which had a very fine needle. And all he had to do was brush the needle against Castro's skin, and Castro would likely die. And he was explaining this. The date was November 22nd, 1963. The phone rang. It was a call from Washington, uh, CIA headquarters. And the, uh, the, phone, the message in the phone call was President Kennedy had just been assassinated, and the, message, the mission to kill Castro was canceled. And later, it, the CIA found out that this hero of um, this guerrilla hero whom they had been paying uh, as, as an agent for a couple of years. In fact, was a double agent and had been working for Castro all along and had no intention of killing uh, So, um, And then, of course, the other amusing thing is that, at least as far as I know, Fidel Castro is still alive. Um, Kennedy's been dead for more than for almost 50 years, and um, um, almost everybody else who was in charge of him at the time was passed away. One of the lessons, by the way, of the Cuban Missile Crisis is how important communication was. Uh, President Kennedy was able to communicate with Premier Khrushchev by several channels because the United States and the Soviet Union had diplomatic relations, so they could talk to each other and step back from the Britain. War. Um, well, the lesson from that is that we should have diplomatic relations with every country, and, um, especially countries that um, we're concerned about, um, like Iran and North Korea. And so it's just stupid. You know, Iran. Okay, so the end of the story. Um, stories. Um, so let's see, I can go in, well, let me go a little bit further in this, in this same direction. And what we've done here is we've seen that um, what the commutator is of these, in fact, I can, I don't know if I can derive this or if it's 
if I can derive this in the time that remains, let me just perhaps give you the answer. I think it's maybe I could. Let's tell you what the result is, whether I can derive it on the fly and in the time remaining, I don't know. Minus I delta, and just because I'm copying this from uh, Weinberg's book, um, where he loves Greek letters, we're going to have some Greek letters here. one get for the and what is a nu? A nu is for the spatial indices it's this and for mu equals zero it's just zero because the remember in the Coulomb gauge quantization we, 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 we've gotten rid of a zero we've replaced it by an integral of rho of x rho of y over 4 pi x minus y. Okay and what is this? Oh, there's a minus i here. I somehow left out the i. And this is an integral then dqp, 2 pi cubed, 2p0, or length of p, times dpi p x minus y. <coughs> Theta of x minus y plus e to the minus i p x minus y theta of y minus x. And what Weinberg means by x minus y is really this. And then what and then there's obviously a mu nu dependence, and mu nu dependence is what he calls p mu nu, and it's just the thing that we derived earlier. Namely, it's um, right. It, so th really, this is sort of a bit silly here. This is really I J. Let me let me fix this up because it's it's a little bit. I think we're making things overly mysterious here. It's delta. Ij minus Pipj over P vector squared. Okay. That's what the actual um, formula is. And then of course, if either of these were zeros, then you'd obviously have zero on the right hand side. Because the time order product of zero times zero is zero, or the time order product of zero times Aj is zero. So that um is uh, the expression and um, I suppose I suppose I might as well derive it because it's it could just reinforce what you've already seen earlier today I wasn't planning on deriving this but what will this be? Well, as we did it for the, for the, um, this is going to be theta of x0 minus y0, and then it's going to be ai plus of x, ajy minus, right? Because if we have to, if we put in the plus part here, we're just going to get zero. If we put in the minus part, we're going to get zero. Remember, these are space indices, so whether they're up or down doesn't matter. And this again is plus minus vacuum. Now we can replace these two 
with commutators, because that's not going to change anything. Okay, so now we've just got the commutator of A plus with A minus. So let me work that out using what we have here. So A plus and A minus. And what we're going to have then is some of the lambda, blah, 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 blah. This is A plus, but we're not going to have this. And what's A minus? Well, it's, let me, let me rewrite A minus here. So to put it differently, we can put it all on one line here. This is going to be A minus. So this is going to be epsilon epsilon J star uh, lambda prime of K prime A dagger lambda prime of K prime e to the minus I K prime Y. Okay? With the sum though, right? We're summing over, yes. In the, in the integral in the K prime? Well, I better not throw them together. Sequential. By the way, that long story that I told you about the CIA, I heard this on what's called C-SPAN 3. They were replaying uh, a um, symposium, or they, they were replaying, or perhaps it was perhaps a live broadcast from the Kennedy Center at Harvard, um, the 50th anniversary of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay. Um, and yes, dqk prime, 2 pi cubed, 2 k0 prime. All right, I think we've got everything now. Now, this thing gives us the delta function. Um, we still have a sum over lambda, and we'll have epsilon lambda i of k, epsilon j star lambda prime, k prime, and then we have delta lambda lambda prime delta q, k minus k prime. So that's from the commutator. And then there's the factor e to the i k x minus i k prime y. Okay, well the delta functions make everything so much nicer. We just get dqk, 2 pi cubed, 2 k0. And now we have sum over lambda, epsilon i lambda of k, epsilon j star lambda of k, uh, e to the i k, x minus y. And now this sum, of course, is integral dqk over 2 pi cubed, 2k0. And this sum is delta ij minus kikj over k squared. And the phase factor is e to the i k x minus y. OK. So now, this thing here is what we call delta plus, or what did I call it over here?
Well, it's that we 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 clearly finished. I mean, we've got the. Where are we? This thing is this thing, and so vacuum time of <coughs> product A I A J is then theta of x zero minus y zero. And uh, the first term is this one that we just did, namely integral dqk over 2 pi q, 2k0 to e the ik, x minus y, and then this delta ij minus kikj over k squared. And now the next term is Well, it's obviously the same thing, but just with y and x interchanged, right? And so this is a piece of chalk. And the difference in the chalk. Huh? And it's integral Okay, so that's what the thing is and now if we compare what I wrote down you see it's exactly the same. So we've derived this expression. All right, we're at the end of the hour. I think if, if there's a question, let's ask the question and I'll try to answer it. All right. Okay, so, <coughs> so let's um, stop the recording. Can I use the